This is my shop tour, the first shop tour of the year. It's my shop tour for January of 2014. Uh, if you saw my shop tour for December of 2013, you'll see that not all that much has changed, and mostly that's because I've not spent all that much time in the shop. Um, over the Christmas holidays, I did a little bit of work in the shop, but mostly was in the middle of renovating a bathroom, which I'm still in the middle of. And then I had a vacation, and we were away, and then I caught the flu. So not all that much has happened the past couple weeks. But regardless, January is almost over, so I want to take you through and show you where the shop stands right now. We'll consider this the start of the year. Um, we're staring here at the right side of the shop as you first walk in. Here on the floor, as it has been for the longest time, is treehouse equipment. Uh, right there, you've got my router table, which I need to get out of here. You've got stuff that usually lives in the back of my truck, which I need to get out. Uh, that came out of the truck for vacation, hasn't gotten back in yet. And these red drawers, the red drawers are going to get moved underneath the miter table, as you'll see in a little bit. There's my table saw. In one of the last videos, I talked about possibly cutting the rails off a couple inches shorter, since I don't use the full. What can you? I don't use the full 32 inches of rip cut capacity. I think if I if I took it to say 26. It'd probably be more than enough. I have a track saw. If it gets that big, I can always just do it in the track saw on the driveway. So I think I've decided I am going to cut the rails off the off the, um, off the table saw. But that's probably still a project that's a ways off. As we come down, my normal tool racks, the slide-out one, and my bastard tool cabinet. There's some uh, XPF that I was using for the bathroom renovation to insulate the fan bucket full of clamps. I need to get these organized. I'm very, very happy with the clamp racks I've built so far. I just haven't come up with clamp racks for these clamps, so I need to get my button gear and do that. Um, this mobile cart here in the middle needs to go away. Um, I'm dealing with bringing some bigger equipment into the shop, and it's first on my list to get broken down and gotten rid of. I don't have a good solution for the drill press yet. It may just go back in the attic for the time being. Um, these red drawers are in four little units and they can get broken apart and put here on the wall underneath this um, the miter saw bench and the rest of this will just get broken down. There's some open shelves in the back that can just get disassembled and thrown away and those will go on shelves on the wall. Here we've got my planer. Um, I like this rack I've made for it, but I think I've mentioned before this rack is a very inefficient use of the space underneath it. So I may be reworking this to incorporate some drawers of some sort underneath the planer. We'll see how that goes. I don't think I can get the planer off of a mobile cart just yet, but I want to at least make the most use of that mobile cart for the planer. Um, it's my Festool vacuum, uh, my tracks for the track saw, the track saw. And here's some shelves for the Festool stuff. These shelves need to actually get moved over a little bit, and then the tracks can hang on the wall next to them. Uh, I'll get around to that someday. Here's my levels. Here's one of my clamp racks, which is a very simple design of a, I think that's a five quarter by six behind a two by four. The two by four has holes drilled in it. And these two pipes are actually the original rails for the original fence of my bandsaw. I just stuck them in the holes. They're at a very slight angle. It's like one or two degrees. And the clamps just hang on it. So they hook nicely and they sit just fine. Um, very, very convenient. And when I'm here at the bench, I can reach right up with my hand and grab them. That's great. These are just really simple, cheap, open shelves here. Nothing I would call permanent, but it gets a lot of stuff relatively organized and certainly off the floor. My red cabinets are in that corner. They'll stay there for the time being, though. I may end up tucking one or two of them in these lower corners underneath the wings of the joiner. I was just thinking about that. Uh, here's my bench. On top of it is essentially another bench slab glued up. This is actually going to be a desk for inside the house. It's going to be a built-in desk. We're taking out a closet and building a little nook for the computer. This was one of the two projects I was going to do over Christmas, the other one being the bathroom. And since the bathroom's only about a third of the way done, uh, all I managed to do with this one was get it glued up. And there's the, my toolbox and the Pinewood Derby, which, alas, I'm sorry to say, we finished solid mid of the, mid of the pack today, uh, this year. So 
Some of that is the bums rush we gave it, but in an event. It was a nice time. We built fun cars. The kids had a good time. It's a worthwhile event. I've got some miscellaneous lumber over here in the corner. Here's my other tool rack. This one, I'm very, very pleased with the way it came out. At some point, I'm going to write this up thoroughly on the blog and maybe even have plans for it. Um, it holds a lot, a lot of clamps in that back corner. Um, I don't know how many I have, but over the years, what I tend to do is I pick up parallel clamps two, three times a year. I pick them up one, two at a time, typically two at a time in pairs. Um, you know, they are outrageously expensive, but if I see them on sale, I'll pick up two here, two there. In fact, I just got notice today, on January 30th, that the two 12-inch jet parallel clamps that I bought on a Black Friday sale in November have finally shipped. So I'll have two more 12-inch clamps, which will bring me to six total. Um, I find the 12-inch ones, these little ones over here, to be some of the most frequent ones I use, and I'm very happy to get uh, two more. For whatever reason, in the box stores, which are now selling the Bess Bessie Re Revo 2s, which are great clamps, and the Jorgensen behind it, between Ho Lowe's and Home Depot, you can get those two brands, they, they start at 24 inches, which, uh, I don't need 24 inch clamps, I need 12s. So I'm very excited that the 12s I bought on a very good sale on Black Friday are finally shipping. Um, up here, we've got my lumber rack for the time being. It's, I'm not going to say it's 100% finished, but it's basically finished and it was very fast to set up and it works pretty well. These open steel shelves on the bottom two let me hold lots of off cuts. You can see down here all the little pieces that fit up there it means it doesn't have to be a long piece which depending on your attitude towards saving scraps of wood is a good thing or a bad thing. I'm of a mixed opinion on it right now but I do like the open shelves. The upper one doesn't have the shelves because the shelves are expensive and the upper one only has longer pieces of wood on it. Um, down here is the outfeed table for my new miter saw setup. It's finally set up. Underneath it is my my Delta joiner from 53 I believe. It's a nice old workhorse. The pot belly adds a neat aesthetic to it. Um, and then, <coughs> excuse me, come through here. There's the miter saw. I have a, a video on the setup of the miter saw. I would recommend you take it if you're take a look at it if you're interested. The the saw being recessed back into the wall by the depth of the wall, framed like a window essentially. Um, it makes the most of the space. You know, this is a guys for the abrupt cutout before. That's when the phone battery died. So now here I am in the kitchen, and it's charged. You can see I'm getting over from the flu, so not quite photo ready, but please make do. Uh, that's about it for the shop. I was just talking about the saw and how well it fits in there. The total depth on that bench that the miter saw rests on is about 19 inches. And it's a 12 inch capacity saw and it does full depth and everything. So I, I found it to be a really effective way to reduce a couple inches off the depth of the saw cabinet. Um, in any event, when you go past that, you've just got my band saw and then my sheet good storage. Uh, as I kind of alluded to, I'm looking to squeeze a couple of more machines in there, and it's going to make a make a lot of take a lot of stress into that space. Um, so I'm going to try to minimize a bit and clean things up, and see what I can do to make the most of it. It's always going to be a tight space, and if I can get some efficient tools in there, I don't mind necessarily making it a slightly tighter space, but. I, I'm perhaps naive, but I don't think it's going to be that bad when I put the tools in. I was measuring before I shot the video, and I, I think it'll work out. So in any event, by the next video, you should see that the shop has been reorganized a little bit, hopefully cleaned out, and a bit more space has been won to, uh, to make some room. So thanks for watching.